Well, good afternoon, geezers. Um, I thought I'd put this wee video together after some positive feedback from the Chander video, which was very kind of everybody. Um, as I say, I'm no expert or don't pretend to be any great expert in these. It's just I've had a fair bit of experience. I've learned the hard way. I've ended up paying a lot of money for a lot of different bits and pieces, and some of them work and some of them don't. And um, and uh, I just like to relate a wee bit of that information to folks, and hopefully it helps you out. Um, I know a lot of folks are coming to this uh, later in life, uh, which is a tremendous challenge. I take my hat off to you. It's quite amazing, and uh, I think in many cases it it uh, keeps people young. There's no doubt about it. Um, Striding out there with the pipes invigorates folks and uh, works out the heart and lungs and keeps people going well. So for this video, uh, my main piece I want to cover here is a question I see popping up quite a bit, and it's about reed breaking. Now, there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet, and it's all very good. There's tremendous stuff uh, by a variety of different people. Um, but I thought I'd put it all into one compact little video. Well, it's not going to be that compact. It'll probably last a wee bit longer than that. But... Um, I know it. a lot of folks stumble with it. You know, what do you do? How do you pick a good reed? How do you pick a reed? Um, generally, when you're getting reeds through the mail, um, you're hoping that they send you some reasonable reeds. Now, the bottom line is, to be honest, I don't think there's a lot of bad reeds going around. Um, if you're buying from a reputable, reputable dealer and a reputable maker, um, those guys have got a name to keep, and they're not going to sell rubbish. Um, now, uh, that's my opinion. I'm sure there's folks out there who'll disagree with it, but uh, um, I think if you buy a reed from McPhee, he's going to make sure that that reed is pretty good when it gets to you. And and we'll come on to the, some discussion about this on picking the reeds. Um, the more details, the more information you can give most of the reed makers now they will make a read or give you a read that's close enough to what you need. Um, uh, if you give them a reading that's uh, inches of water, which is generally the reading that you get from uh, this clever little device here. Um, if you know that you are quite comfortable starting off at 28 inches of water, then you give them that information and they will give you a read uh, that fits pretty pretty close to that. Now that reed may change a wee bit depending where you live. If you live in Scotland, um, uh, moisture isn't an issue. Uh, it's all around you, uh, underneath you, above you, um, and if you stand still for long enough you'll go mildly mouldy if you don't move. Uh, whereas where I live uh, in the Canadian Arctic, um, moisture is a big issue. Like it's very, very dry here. We live basically in a in a desert, and so for me, trying to keep reeds moist is a big issue. Um, I can have reeds that will um, start start off at about uh, five hundred hertz because they're so sharp because they're so dry. Um, now that takes a little bit of work, um, and. Uh, you have to be careful or else you can really ruin a reed fast. Now, um, so how how do you take that reed, how do you pick that reed and how do you get it going for yourself? How do you make it sound like it, you know, it's going to work? Um, well, again, it's a case of picking your, your reed maker. Now, I, I'm a big fan of G1 and McPhee's. Like I, I th those are my favorite reads. Uh, the Platinum series, um, the guys there are really excellent. Uh, their uh, reads are made to match their chanters. And if you can afford it, one of their chanters, along with a set of reads, and it, it works really well. Um, the McPhee's reads as well, I really like them. They suit the chanters that I've got. Now, again, it depends on the chander. If you have a Dunbar's chander or a Gibson chander or a Nile chander, uh, McCallum's chander, um, you need to look and see what uh, reed they 
advised to go with their with their um, particular chanter. Uh, there will be a selection of reeds, and uh, you you just pick and choose and find out which one for you works best. Um, now, my biggest piece of advice is, when you get the reed for a start, give it a chance. Don't manipulate it, don't trim it, don't squeeze it, don't sand it, don't wet it. Um, let it come in. Um, one of the, the, the biggest things, uh, and I'll, I'll take a McPhee reed here, because uh, it's about choosing that reed and that initial squawk that you get. Um, and, and I mean a good squawk, that's the other thing too. So here we have lovely reed um and there's there's different you know number of different types uh here and for me I've, I've forgotten what the what this one is but anyway it's a mcphee reed so that's got a pretty good squawk to it this has potential it should be good and if you put it in a chanter um, and I'll just pull one out here. Here we have a McPhee reed. Nice wee reed. It has an effective squawk that we like. So we have a chanter. Let's let's sound what it's. Let's find out what it's like. Well, first thing to do, take all the tape off the chanter, because that was put on for a. Uh, a different reed and the chances of it matching uh, the reed that you've got are slim to none you never know but it's easier just take it off because you can I put it back on so put the reed in that's not bad it takes a wee bit of puff uh, but it's uh, it's certainly playable, and I'm not going to rupture a vein in my neck. Um, so, um, I would go with this. Now, this this is a Nile Chander, and it's quite famous for... Um, it has a beautiful tone to it, phenomenal um, harmonics. Um, but it it uh, is famous for being hard to find reeds for. So, this is actually quite an accomplishment. So, And you've all seen it now. So here is the, the, uh, is the gauge, and I'll just blow it here. And... We're about 36, 37. I'll see if I can film that. Let me see. Well, actually, there we can see it's it's thirty eight. Now, um, that's a reed that's been sitting in my drawer for um, for quite a while, and it has no moisture in it. So, uh, do I pare it down so it'll go to uh, thirty inches of uh, thirty inches of water? No, 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 no. Uh, put it in. Uh, put it either. start to play it to break it in and it's just a few minutes a day just have a wee blow into it one of the best ways of putting moisture into a reed is is blowing into it blowing through it and you will raise the moisture of that reed uh, quite effectively so Now, if you can, put it in a wee plastic baggie. Um, something actually smaller than this would be better. Uh, you know those, you, the, generally your reeds come uh, in them. There's a wee, a wee reed size bag. Uh, I generally have 
heaps of them hanging around here, but uh, of course today I can't find any. So anyway, the, the thing is, is blow through it a couple of times and stick it away in a wee baggie. Don't add water. The moisture's locked in there now. Just let that sit in there. And tomorrow, take it out, give it a couple of uh, blows through with your with your breath, stick it in your chander and see how it goes. Is it any easier? Uh, if you've got the wherewithal to be able to get yourself a meter, stick the meter on it and see what's happening. Uh, within about a week, you'll notice a difference. Things will start to come down a wee bit. Um, it'll be more playable. It's gonna last longer. If you start bending the reeds or um, manipulating them or even putting a band on them, um, uh, you will find that the those are sort of last ditch attempts. If you need to play like tomorrow and you don't have a reed, those are the things you're gonna have, you're gonna have to sacrifice a reed. But uh, if you're not and you're well prepared and you're you're looking forward to the next reed that you're preparing to play and you still have a running reed at the moment, then. This is the way to do it. Uh, take your time. Give the reed time. Uh, it may be a little sharp or a little flat in certain places. Most likely uh, a wee bit sharp in G and F. Uh, tape fixes that. A wee bit of tape on and you'll fix that on the chanter. No problem at all. Remember, tape only goes at the top. You can make a, you can make a reed flatter, but you can't make it sharper. The only way to make it sharper the reed is to push it further into the hole um, and uh, but that will change stuff in your top hand not quite so heavily in the bottom hand uh, but there's a lot of really good information out there and better than I'm going to give you um, if you uh, if you get some of the videos that are out there uh, by some of the the big guys um, but uh, you'll find that in most cases any reed you buy uh, it's actually not too bad if again if you're buying from a a, a good a good uh, reed manufacturer um here we have a as i say like we have the platinum g1 and this is a this is an easy an easy read so it's got a wee bit more uh, there's quite a crow in there um i don't know how it'll go in this this chanter but we'll see chanter uh, is pretty choosy about reeds so that's that one's a, sounding a bit rocky um, so uh, I wouldn't use this in that this will probably go quite well in one of my Dunbar chanters um, uh, which uh, which I quite like as well um, they're middle of the road chanters you don't hear a lot about them in competitions and stuff like that but for a band and just getting out playing they do the job they're great great chanters um, now, the the next thing is the moisture in that reed. Now, I said, for those folks that are on a budget, uh, a wee baggy does the trick. But if you're if you're feeling a bit flush, I can recommend one of these great little uh, moisturizer uh, humidifier. Um, now these work on. Um, little humidity control bags. Um, these uh, you buy from your your uh, bagpipe store. Um, you can find them online. They're uh, now, of course, this is backwards, isn't it? So this is an eighty-four uh, percent three-way hum humidity control, and you put two of these wee bags in the back of this uh, this box. And uh, this is clocking out, uh, what do we do, 84% at the moment, 84% humidity. Now, in here, the humidity is about 44%, um, I think, uh, was what I, I read off something just recently. Um, and uh, that's, quite a, that's quite a difference. Um, so, 
again, uh, they're well worth the money. Uh, and there's there's other kinds. So there's other stuff here. Here's uh, Canair Piper's Pal. Um, you can you don't have to buy the wee baggies for these. Uh, you moisturize these crystals. There's a wee charcoal bag here to try and protect uh, um, stuff from going bad in the in in the moisture. Um, the, these these are good if you're using them all the time and cleaning them. Uh, I've had a problem with reeds going mouldy because I left them way too long. Um, but they're a, they're a good they're a good little good little unit. Uh, and again, great for blow that reed, stick it in one of these the next day, take it out, blow it again, and with it being in the the moist uh, the humid atmosphere that's in these. Uh, uh, humidifiers, uh, that helps uh, get the moisture well into the reed. Um, the, the, other, the other things are, you know, if you're going through a lot of reeds, um, I thought I'd get myself one of these. Similarly, Piper's Pal, um, again, you moisturize the crystals. There's a um, recharge kit that you have to buy. Um, they reckon uh what about a year i think or so uh recharge the crystals and clean out everything uh i would use a wee bit of bleach myself uh to clean everything out again just to avoid the the uh um the spores and the fungus that can end up growing in these things if you're not careful um the um, uh this again is if you're using a lot of reeds and cycling them and keeping them moving, uh, I wouldn't leave them in here long term. Uh, it, uh, again, the moisture that's in these uh, is not quite so controllable and uh, you will have um, reeds that can go mouldy if you're not careful. And nobody wants a mouldy reed. Um, the, other, the other great uh, tool that I, I absolutely love is the tone protector. Um, these came out a number of years ago. Uh, I jumped on one pretty much straight away and uh, it made a huge difference. I stick the tone protector on after I've been playing on top of the chander and uh, it just keeps, uh, keeps the moisture um, on the reed um, and does a great job. Uh, I'm just putting this in because I'm going to show you something here. Um, again, you might not be able to see this, but here we go. We have a reading of 46, 47%. Now, that's the reading here in my house with the heating on and everything in the Arctic, November. Uh, so pretty dry, pretty dry indeed. But if I... If I breathe through this, you can see we're up to 80%. That's just a couple of breaths. Uh, now 91%. So what I was saying to you about uh, breathing through the reed to put moisture into the reed, there's the fruit of the pudding. Um, the greatest way to put moisture into something is with, with, uh, with warm, moist air. And we as human beings are pretty good at producing that stuff, uh, some more than others. Now, um, so uh, that was just a wee, a, wee, a wee piece of science for you. So anyway, that's the, that's the tone protector. The one I had before, again, is a, another product, again, the Piper's Pal. Again, similarly, um, uh, these are good too. You moisturize the, the gel. It's got a wee thing of carbon here, and you pop it on over the over the uh, the chanter top. And these ones require you to have this wee wee stick that has a wee rubber, um, a wee rubber grommet in the end, a wee rubber stopper, and you push that up inside, 
and that seals off the inside here and keeps the moisture in here. Now, these are great too, and they really do keep moisture in your chatter. Um, uh, so again, uh, just another option. Um, and as you can see, I've pretty much tried a few of them. Um, uh, more money than cents, people might say. But uh, again, one of the biggest problems is, is living up here in this dryness is that it, it's a huge issue trying to keep pipes going. And it can be frustrating. And with these uh, gadgets that I've got, it makes life a lot easier. Now, um, so that's basically uh, getting a, a read up and going and keeping it going. Um, as I say, the, the, this is probably worth um, uh, spending your money on. It's really for any piper, um, I think one of these is, is a really handy tool to have in the pipe case. Um, they, they aren't cheap. I, I think you're probably about a hundred bucks for one of these or somewhere about that. Um, but they, they certainly do let you know exactly how hard you're blowing and what you're fit to blow. Now, um, you know, it, it's, and it's up to individuals, especially for the, for us old geezers. Um, when I was young and fit and full of, with fine lungs, I used to be able to blow incredibly hard reeds and that came with tone and, and power and and uh, and sound uh, now I've got to be a wee bit more selective come down a wee bit um, and uh, try and not rupture anything uh, so this again as I say was probably one of the best little gadgets I bought uh, to help me find out about my reads now um, as I've said, you can go on the internet and there's incredible uh, information out there about um, all sorts of stuff. Um, but you just have to pick through it and make your own uh, decision and, and what suits you. Um, talk to the folks that you're playing the pipe band with. You know, the, the, they're, they're your buddies and they're your mates. Um, and you can learn a bit from them. Um, uh, also, if you're in a pipe band, uh, you probably want to be playing the same chanters and the same reeds um, if you can. Uh, and that will make a big big difference to your sound and tone. Um, I know that doesn't always work that way because sometimes pipe bands come, to, come together from all over the place. And uh, you've just got to make the best of it. But uh, I hope this is of some help. Um, I hope I've uh, covered a lot of bits and pieces. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And uh, I'll see what I can do to try and help you out. Um, the, as I say, anything on note that, that breaking, on, breaking, breaking in reads, uh, I'm more than delighted to try and help you with. Um, the, the big thing is, is, as I say, touch them as little as you possibly can for a start and take your time um and then as i say the big thing is is uh buy from good folks and you uh you won't be disappointed um a couple of bucks in a read uh is probably uh well spent uh, a couple of extra bucks should i say on a read is probably well spent um also uh don't just buy one read um buy if you can buy at least three if not maybe half a dozen uh, i've got a i've got a heap of reeds here i've got very different boxes uh, one of the things i like from uh uh g1 is they come in this super little case great little reed case and they also come you can buy the reeds in a set where you've got different strengths and these guys will send a um uh, a wee piece of a wee post it inside with all the strengths of the reeds as they lay in the box so you can see uh very easy 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 plus easy uh and then medium so that's uh, you know it's going to cost you a few bucks but it's worth 
having those to to go through and find out what suits you um um that's another way round the the strength problem um and then also you've got a whole pile of different reads for uh different occasions and different times uh when you're you know um that you can that you can work away with and try and uh, experiment with um okay and then of course mcphee reads you give give the man then the information about what kind of read you want and he will produce that read and send it to you uh wonderful guy again um he has some tremendous uh youtube videos up about his making of reads and uh uh it's just tremendous to watch the man at work um I have a lot of time from. I think he's absolutely amazing. Uh, so, uh, again, I hope this has helped and uh, and say leave some leave leave your questions in the in the comments, and I'll try and get something back to you, and uh, and I'll keep moving forward with this. All the best. Keep blown, and uh, I'm off this afternoon to go and play at the local school for the remembrance service. Um, which I'm looking forward to. Take care, folks. All the best. Bye.